I'm going to just quickly describe how lymphocytes do their job and talk about antibodies and talk about vaccination, that sort of thing. So here we go. We're going to start off here with a drawing of a bacterium. It's a pretty simple drawing of a bacterium. And on the surface of this bacterium are going to be little proteins. And there are little proteins uh, on the surface of every cell. They could be glycoproteins, but we'll call them proteins for the sake of it. Now, these proteins can be recognized by a phagocyte. Um, and here comes our phagocyte here. Here it comes along with its lobe nucleus there. And there we go. Dum, 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 dum. So there's its lobe nucleus. And it is engulfing this bacterium. And what do we end up with? Well, we end up with our phagocyte. And inside a little mini vacuole. Uh, we've got our bacterium here, and it's recognized this bacterium is foreign, it's taken it in, and now what it'll do is it will digest this bacterium here, it's curtains for this bacterium, uh, and uh, it will get digested in there. So, what does our phagocyte, let's write phagocyte here, then do? Well, it takes these antigens, these antigens here, and it puts them on its surface. It's quite clever. It grabs hold of them. Uh, it doesn't break them down totally and it puts them onto its cell surface membrane like this. And it moves and finds a lymphocyte with a matching cell surface receptor like this. So this clearly can fit into there. This antigen from this bacterium here is going to lock into this lymphocyte here. Uh, let's just draw our lymphocytes very large nucleus. There it is. There we go. So our lymphocytes here, we will find a lymphocyte specific for this antigen here. And actually our, our phagocyte, whose nucleus I have not drawn, I do apologize Mr. Phagocyte, uh, or Mrs. Phagocyte, it could be. Um, no, phagocytes don't have a gender. What am I talking about? This phagocyte here will go around looking for various lymphocytes, l well looking for the lymphocyte which is going to match up with this one here and he will, it's, it's like, uh, like finding a spy, he will say do you recognize this antigen? I don't know why it would have a Russian accent. I don't know. I don't even know that that is a proper Russian accent. Apologies to you if you do have a proper Russian accent. And it will find the lymphocyte which will match up to this antigen. And that will switch on this lymphocyte here. And then this lymphocyte will start kicking out, will start producing loads of molecules called antibodies antibodies and the antibodies are kind of y-shaped molecules and they are very very specific they will match just one specific antigen and so these now come along and they let's get rid of a few of these uh, other drawings here let's do that here we go here we go here we go eraser get rid of you uh, we no longer need you mr phagocytes, Mr. Macrophage, phagocytes, let's get rid of you. There we go, there we go, there we go. So, our antigens, they are coming along here now, and what they are going to do is to bind onto, uh, sorry, the antibodies are coming along here, and they're going to bind onto the antigens on the surface of this bacterium here. And as they do that, they might do one of two things. Well, they might cause it to burst, but actually what they'll do is they'll cause it also to clump to other bacteria because there are going to be other bacteria around here who have also got this antigen on their surface. Oh, if I can draw it. There we go. There is another bacterium, very poorly drawn, with another uh, antigen on its surface. It's going to have another one there and... Uh, here we go. This antibody here is binding to another antibody, and that is binding to another bacterium. And what we're having now is we're having these bacteria starting to have to clump together. They clump up like that, and that makes it really easy for big Mr. Fa Mr. or Mrs. Okay, 
uh, Mr. or Mrs. Phagocyte to come along, there's its lobe nucleus again, and engulf this lot. Great, so it makes it, the lymphocyte, because of all these antibodies it's making, these antibodies, is making it really easy for the phagocyte here. Uh, that's great, of course. Now, what else will this lymphocyte do? Let's have a think. So, we've got the point about the antibodies. Let's get rid of our phagocytes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to get rid of all you guys as well, because I just want to think what else the lymphocyte does. So, we found the right lymphocyte for the job, which can produce antibodies against that specific antigen from this invading pathogen, in this case a bacterium. Uh, great. Well, the lymphocyte will kick out uh, antibodies. Well, what else will it do? Well, it will also make loads more lymphocytes. One lymphocyte is just not enough. So it's going to make lots of other lymphocytes. And these other lymphocytes are called plasma cells. Uh, you don't have to remember that at GCSE, but they are called plasma cells, and they make out, they just uh, kick out a whole load of antibodies. The same antibody, the uh, antibodies against that same antigen from that bacterium, that antigen that we identified right at the start as being a bit dodgy because it's clearly belonging to a bacterium. So plasma cells are made, and they're going to make lots and lots and lots of antibodies. It's Yes. Uh, the other thing the lymphocyte is going to make is something called a memory cell. In fact, it'll probably make a couple of memory cells. Here we go. They are memory cells. And what these memory cells will do is they won't initially make lots of antibodies. Instead, they will remain dormant. So let me just give myself a little bit more room. Here we go. Dum, 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 dum. Apologies for the singing. I, there we go. Never mind. Never mind. Um, so, these memory cells will remain dormant and they will stay in your body for a long time, for several years, maybe for many years. And they will wait to be reactivated. Uh, and they'll be reactivated when they next meet this antigen. So here comes our bacterium again. It's a little bit later, Oop, a little bit later, and we've suddenly found the same antigen. And now that will be presented to these memory cells who will go, ha, 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 I recognize you, I remember this, and now I'm just going to, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to turn myself into loads of plasma cells and some more memory cells. So very quickly now, once we have all these memory cells, very quickly we can respond to this bacterium next time round because our memory cells are there already. They can make loads of plasma cells, which will make loads of antibodies, and also will make more memory cells and next time you meet this antigen here the response will be even faster and therefore by the time you've met this the second time or the third time you're not going to even notice you've met it you won't you barely have the chance to feel ill because your memory cells will be onto it so quickly that you just won't feel that you've had an infection and in that case you are said to have become immune. You have immunity to this pathogen here with this particular antigen. That's how we get immunity. How can we use this for vaccinations? Okay, well let's do a little bit of erasing, shall we? Uh, point to options, eraser. Right, let's get rid of these. Let's get rid of a bit of, bit of this. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, Come on, eraser. You better be erasing stuff. There we go. That's better. <clears throat> How can we use this in vaccination? Come on, pointer. No, that's not what I wanted. 
though maybe it would have been a good idea in the first place. So, more erasing, more space please, thank you. What would happen if we got our bacterium here, okay, with its antigens on it, now, if you just gave someone this bacterium, you're going to make them unwell, and no one really wants to feel unwell. Mm. So, what you might do instead is one of two things. One, you kill it, and so you have a dead bacterium, but which still has these antigens on its surface. Now, because it's still got those antigens, it will still be recognized as foreign and we're still going to get the whole response to it that we had before with the living one except this time you're going to gain immunity without actually having to fight off a living pathogen so you can have a dead pathogen uh, in this case a bacterium but you have a dead pathogen great or what you can have is you can break it up you can just chop it up into bits of its surface with the antigens on it. So directly inject the antigens into someone. And that can work. Or what you can have, as I said there are two options, there are three. Huh? You can have what is called a live attenuated pathogen. And that means, yeah, it's alive, but it's just not very good. Uh, so it can't really take over in the same way that a nasty pathogen ca can, uh, but it's still got those antigens. In fact, it might be a really closely related bacterium or virus which gives you immunity um, in the way that cowpox gave immunity to smallpox. Cowpox, which was a relatively benign infection uh, caused by a virus, uh, but that virus had really similar antigens to smallpox, which is a really nasty condition. But those who had had cowpox didn't get smallpox because the antigens on the surfaces of those pathogens were really, really similar. So, this is a mess, but I hope maybe in some way that has helped. Thank you.